Hello, <laughs> Chloe. Thank God you're here. I'm sick of getting picked on all the time. People take my lunch money and they think I'm weird because I caught all 720 Pokemon. Girls don't like me. I would think my long hair is stupid and I'm sick of getting picked on. I want to be strong. Strong people don't get picked on. How do I get strong? How do I get strong? If you look that up online or if you ask someone, you're going to get a lot of results. But you can break it down into a few main points that are going to keep you on track of your goals to getting strong and that are going to lead to greater success. Basically, what you have to do is you have to lift weights and you have to lift more weights over time, which is going to get you stronger, which is very basic, but we'll go over that in this presentation today. So we're going to start off with what is resistance training? Resistance training is basically physical exercise that requires muscular contraction against the resistance, typically just lifting weights. And this elicits muscular hypertrophy and strength. Hypertrophy is just increasing muscle mass size and strength is how much the body can do in one repetition of the movement. So when you resistance train, you're basically tearing down you have this microscopic tear down your muscle fibers, these microscopic tears, and then when you're recovering, these tears repair, the body gets stronger, building a bigger muscle, and this is how your body adapts, and this is how you get stronger. So, when you're resistance training, you're using the ATP PC system, and this basically is for immediate energy, where you're getting energy from high energy phosphates. This is also anaerobic, meaning it does not require oxygen. Resistance training also uses type 2 muscle fibers. So basically there's two types of main fibers, type 1 and type 2. And again, type 2 are mainly in resistance training, and that's what we're going to focus on here. When you resistance train, you also elicit many endocrine responses, releasing many hormones. But for the purpose of this, we're going to stick with the main three that are important to resistance training and strength, which are testosterone, human growth hormone, intrinsic growth factor, and what these do, these increase muscle protein synthesis, which leads to muscular repair and muscular growth. Okay, so now that we know some very basic physiology of resistance training, how can we use this to apply to our actual training? And how can we actually get stronger? So, first thing you want to start off with is the programming. The number one goal is to stay injury free. You want to have longevity in this sport and in this training because if you get injured, it's going to reset your progress and you're going to have to start basically from scratch. So if there is a time where you feel like you can be getting injured or you might be doing too much, take some time back and approach it smartly because you don't want to be out for one whole year as opposed to one week. So you got to be smart with your training. Adherence. Adherence is very important. And what it basically means is how well you can maintain your training. You want to make sure it's enjoyable. If you enjoy doing something, you're going to be more likely to be successful in that area because you like it and you're going to stick with it. Also, being flexible. This means that if something comes up in life, because we all have a lot going on in our lives, no, you can be full-time students, parents, work, everything. A lot goes on, trust me, I know. And that's okay, and you have to know that that's okay. But don't let your training fall off completely, but be flexible with it. So example, if, you have a, if you've been working all day and you can't get training, that's okay. Do it the next day and look at long-term. If you look at the long-term goal and you keep that in mind, that's going to lead to a greater chance of success because if you keep having everything that short term like, oh, I missed my workout today, or I didn't do this, I didn't do that, you're going to end up failing and that's what you don't want. So think long term, you're going to, it's going to help you out in long term for sure. So volume, volume is basically how much work is done and this is weights times reps times sets. And this has been shown to be the greatest factor for muscular hypertrophy and strength. Skull and Field et al. 2007 did a systematic review looking at all the literature regarding resistance training and volume, and it goes to show that this is volume is the main determinant of growth and strength. But so now you're saying, okay, if volume is the greatest thing, let me do 100 sets and reps per day. No, hold on there. There is a point where volume, where more is not always better. So you want to make sure you're doing enough where you're seeing results, but you're not doing too much where you end up getting injured. Again, you want to stay injury free. Intensity is low, so how much weight you're basically moving. And it has been thought before that there are specific rep ranges and percentages to be using. So for example, if you want to gain strength, it was thought that you have to do high reps, I mean, sorry, excuse me, low reps and high percentage weight, and vice versa for hypertrophy, high reps and low weight. 
But Clemp et al. 2016 show that as long as volume is equated, muscular strength and hypertrophy showed the same results in both a high grip group and a low grip group. So again, this just goes to show that volume is the most important thing. So looking at load, it can be broken down into percentage of one rep max and also RPE, RIR. So RPE is basically rate of perceived exertion, meaning how hard and difficult the exercise was, and repetitions in reserve, meaning how much you have left in the tank. So for example, if I say that was an RPE 10, the scale goes from one to 10. If I say it was a 10, then that means that was absolute max I could do, can't do anymore. But if I say it was an RPE 8, I could do two more reps till I get to actual failure. And Ormsby et al. 2017 looked at bench press and the utilization of the RPE RIR system, and he went to show that it is a useful tool for gauging intensity and load. So if you're just starting off training, you're not really going to have a true one rep repetition max. And this is where the RPE comes into play. It can be very beneficial. So frequency. Frequency is basically how often you're working out. Again, if you're just starting off, you don't need to be in the gym seven days a week. You're coming from not doing any type of training to doing some type of training. So that's gonna, you're going to see results from that. So three or four days at most, you're going to be seeing good results. You have to keep in mind that you are learning. Resistance training, doing these movements, they're all different things. They're new to you. So it's important to know that learning how to properly move and how to properly train is going to be important. When it comes to recovery, it's a main factor in growth. And it's important because if you're training all the time, you can't repair, you're going to again get injured. And that's not what we want. So with recovery, there's many aspects to so it. Briefly, just to go over it, nutrition is important. You're coming from... You're not training to train, so you're going to be increasing the amount of energy your body needs. So you're going to have to be eating more. And by eating more, you're going to be repairing your muscles and you're going to be seeing better improvements in the gym. Also, sleep is very important. If you're not getting enough sleep, you're not going to be able to repair more injury again. So that's why you've got to keep the recovery on point. Organization, when it comes to looking at your training and how you're going to organize it, there is some method to it. So, for example, it has been shown that you want to do your most taxing exercises in the beginning of your workout week where you're most fresh that because so for example if you're doing you start off on a Monday that's when you want to do your most volume work because volume is going to be most taxing on you and that's when you be most fresh so by doing that there you're setting yourself for, for better success throughout the week also with organization if you're training three times a week you don't want to be training Monday Tuesday Wednesday back to back to back because you're not going to be able to recover and again that's going to be affecting your training in totality. So a better option would be Monday, Wednesday, Friday, where you're having that time in between each workout to rest and recover and come into the next day training. So progression, you again, as mentioned before, you have to be lifting more and putting a greater stress and stimulus on your body in order to get stronger. So how can we progress? Well, there's many ways, but progressive overload is the main factor. And progressive overload is basically giving some type of overload, and this can be done through volume, it's been intensity or frequency. So you could be doing more sets or reps, more weight, doing more, so working out more, so you do squats as opposed to one day a week to two days a week. So there's a lot that goes into it, but as long as there's some form, it's gonna cause that adaptations that we so desire. When it comes to exercise selection, there's two types of movements. You have compound movements and isolation movements. Compound movements recruit multiple muscle groups while isolation just focuses on a single one. So an example of isolation would be a bicep curl just using the bicep and a compound would be a squat using the quadriceps, hamstrings, and glutes. And we're going to want to be focusing on these compound movements such as a squat bench and deadlift so we can get greater muscle mass and strength and eliciting the endocrine responses that we want all towards our specific goal of strength. When it comes to rest, Schoenfeld et al. 2016 looked at the importance of rest in between each set and the findings show that longer rest periods led to increased muscular hypertrophy and strength, so it's important to get at least three to seven minutes of rest in between. So to wrap everything up, number one goal, stay injury free, adhere to your program, make it enjoyable and flexible and think long term, get your volume in, get your recovery in, and most importantly, enjoy the process. And again, some limitations to all this, everyone's different, everyone will respond differently, so it's important to keep that in mind as this is not a concrete way to get strong, so there's going to be a lot of variability, but you're going to have fun with it and you're going to get strong, so, oh yeah, anyone that says that long hair is not cool, <laughs> definitely wrong.